Yeah, so um, you know, calcification is probably the last of the of the stages of atherosclerosis, so it's the least modifiable. Um, so we saw, you know, low attenuation plaque, the vulnerable or necrotic core changed a lot. Um, fibro fatty plaque, the softer plaque changed moderately, and fibrous plaque changed less, and then calcified plaque changed the least. So I think that actually makes sense from a biological mechanism that the most uh, earliest plaques and the, and the most vulnerable plaques change the most and the more stable plaques like those with a lot of fibrous tissue or those with dense calcium change less. The p-value for calcification in multivariate analysis was 0.0531. So, you know, from a purist standpoint, it didn't change significantly, but some people would say 0.053 is pretty close to 0.05. And kind of is close to statistical significance. But either way, I think it makes sense biologically that the, the more stable plaque changes less than the, than the earlier softer plaques. Yeah, so while, and while I agree that triglyceride lowering isn't the primary benefit, I think those with high triglycerides are still a potential target. We have a number of, of populations where the target population is based on an on a abnormality of some something, but we don't always treat that specific thing. For many years, diabetes, for example, the presence of diabetes meant you're a high cardiovascular risk, and the treatment wasn't control the hemoglobin A1C. The treatment was add other therapies. So I think, I think we still should be using um, uh, icosapent ethyl largely in patients who have elevated triglycerides because that's where the benefit was shown to be the greatest. Um, and we have data now from uh, triglycerides of 135 and up. And this group is still high risk. I want to emphasize that patients with elevated triglycerides, maybe because of metabolic syndrome and diabetes and other factors, patients with elevated triglycerides are high risk and they appear to benefit from icosapent ethyl. Um, so whether it works in patients with normal triglycerides, I think that does deserve further study. Um, and, and we could not address that in evaporate because we did the evaporate trial the same as the reduce it study. And both of them used entry criteria for triglycerides of 135 and up. Well, I just wanted to point out that the use of cardiac CT now has become highly reproducible and with the reduction in radiation dose does allow us to do these type of trials where we can do serial studies and assess does drug A do better than drug B or does drug A do better than placebo over time and we've had some early uh, studies looking at statins with this serial CT angiography and we've published on the testosterone that testosterone increases atherosclerosis plaque in a, in a placebo controlled randomized trial and now we've been able to show that icosapent ethyl reduces plaque so I do think that it's a nice model it's not invasive it's easy but I do think it's an important way to assess some of the benefits without having to do intravascular ultrasound and take patients to the cath lab twice um, with all of the associated risks. So I think the advances in, in imaging have made, it, made our assessment of atherosclerosis now non-invasive. And I think that's an important part of the, the message of Evaporate is that this is a, uh, a potential tool to look at a host of different therapies that we now have. And, and we're now doing a trial with GLP-1 receptor agonists um, um, uh, with semaglutide to see if that slows plaque progression because that's also shown outcome benefit without a clear mechanism of action.